What a beautiful day. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. I thought I'd come out here and sit. And let's talk about gardening. So many of us I know are not gardening right now. I know a lot of you have been 100 plus degrees pretty much all summer. We've been in the 90s generally, and today we're close to 100. We've been 100 for the past few days. We're in an excessive heat warning right now. So I thought I'd come out and just sit back, kick back with a glass of ice water and say, hey, hi. So what am I doing? I can tell you nothing, but that's not true. I've been working on water fountains and I'm still trying to get my turmeric out. I have one more container of turmeric in the house that I haven't gotten to because I get up in the morning and I take care of everything that needs to be done. And by the time I'm ready to get into the garden and do something, I'm just exhausted and I think I'll do it tomorrow, but I've got to get it out because I had two containers and I got the other one all planted. So, and now it's windy. So I'm kind of been working on that. I wanted to talk about gardening as far as what we should garden. We're going to be coming into fall now and we should start planting soon. The problem is how do you plant when you're 100 degrees? You'd have to keep it in the house and then as soon as the time is right get it outside because it's got to get some growth to it. Fall gardening, winter gardening doesn't mean growing in the winter outside. It means getting it together now. So what am I going to do? Actually I'm going to do something a little different than I have been doing. I'm starting a lot of bird seed to, for my bird garden. So I'm doing that in containers. I'm covering it up. I can show you how to do it and I'm going to grow a lot of my own bird seed. That is not going to replace the bird seed we buy. That's to give certain species of birds the seed that they want. In other words, seed that is still on the plant, green and soft, kind of in a milk, milk stage they call it, and they love that. That's going to bring in more birds. We have a yard full of spice finches. It's so funny. We have spice finches there. We have, um, what is it, pintail white is, and we've got something that came in. We have no idea what it is. We've never seen it. We can't find it. We have searched everywhere online. I don't know what it is. So we'll see. I haven't seen it for a couple days, but it's been hanging around here for a while. So I'm going to grow my own seed. I'm going to get lettuce growing. The only reason I don't have a lot of lettuce growing, it's my fault. I didn't plant it. Even in this heat, I grow lettuce. I just keep it in the shade. It doesn't need the sun at all and they grow really good. So I've got a little bit growing and I'm going to get a lot of the purple tree collards planted. Now that is a perfect plant to grow for the fall and into winter. It loves the cold weather. So what I'm going to do on that is I'm going to chop a lot of my purple tree colored out that has gotten too big and I bought myself an auger. I haven't used it yet. It's in the box. If you want to see how I'm going to use it, let me know and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. A cheap one too. I found it online for like $12 and I thought it's a long one, which is really nice and it will be perfect for what I want to do. I could put small bulbs in, but I don't care about that. I'm going to get a lot of the tree collards off and I'm going to propagate them straight into the ground. So it's one less thing I have to do. In other words, I can put them in a pot. I can wait till they get bigger. I can wait till they set root and move it. I'm going to skip that step altogether. Can I do it? Yeah, I do it all the time. I've done it with different kales, collards. I just put it directly in the ground and your percentage on that is better than 50-50 on what's going to grow. I've got tons of it. Gary's got tons of it. So this is going to work out perfect. I know a lot of people come in and tell you, oh, these are all the plants to grow for the fall. Malabar spinach is a big topic right now. I see a lot of people running with it. Oh, plant Malabar spinach. You'll have it growing everywhere. You will. And I do have it growing now in my bird garden. I've got it growing on the walls. I've got it growing on chain link. There's pros and cons with it. Now, the good thing on the heat, it loves the heat. It's going to climb and take off. It'll grow 100 feet into the air. So that's a good thing. Good thing is it looks beautiful. The leaf is so green. Mine's got the red stem. The berries are great to use as food coloring. So that's a good thing. But what is not good about it? It's not spinach. I don't like the texture of it. I have added a little bit to salad. It's just not my thing. And that's what I wanted to talk about. What you want to do if you are going to grow something is grow something you're going to eat. If you start growing a lot of stuff in your garden or in flower pots or containers around your yard or on a balcony or deck and you don't like it, you'll end up 
not growing. You'll stop growing altogether. You'll think it's too much work. What am I doing? Why am I watering it? Why am I changing pots? Why is it dying and nobody ate it? You want to grow things that you're going to eat. And I'm going to make a small grocery store garden in a special place that I think is just going to blow your head. You're going to think, wow, this is amazing because you can take a tiny spot anywhere, balcony, deck, patio, big backyard, little backyard, and you can grow a lot of stuff. Grow stuff that you're going to eat. Now, if you like radishes, easiest thing to grow. You can grow it almost any time of the year grow radishes. Carrots you can grow. Don't get the ones that get really big. Get the ones that grow small and you can keep picking them and keep growing them. You can grow lettuce, parsley, all kinds of herbs that way, collard, kales. You want to grow things that are going to work for you and your family. Now for me, one of the things I really like growing is lettuce because I can take lettuce that I grow that is organic fresh from my yard, pick the amount of leaves that I want, chop it up, and then I can add in anything I want. Tomatoes, I can add in radishes and carrots, little bits of kale, little bits of collard, anything I've got. Peppers, I'm growing a lot of sweet peppers. They get really big and long. They're beautiful. And that, I can make a big salad out of it, and then I can add it either to whatever I'm eating. I can eat it just like that. I can top it with a little bit of ground meat or chicken or turkey if I want. I can put salad dressing on it. I can add some chips in there so it's like a taco salad with salsa. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that. You can grow that pretty much all year round. Peppers love the hot weather like now, but I keep mine in the shade. And my daughter grows a ton of it. Oh, boy. She's growing all different kinds. If you want to grow peppers and you're in a really hot area and you think your peppers aren't doing good, move them if you are growing them in a container in a shaded area and you will watch them explode with growth. Now, I took some matter off the ground. It was leaves and different things and I put it around my peppers because they had slowed down. And the second I did that, you can use wood chips if you've got it, leaf matter, like leaf mold. They call it leaf mold, but it's dried leaves off of trees. And you can put that around the base of your pepper tree and they'll just, boom, take off. Compost tea, which is, I use collard leaves, you know that, tree collard. But you can grow uh, kale or take weeds and soak them in some water. It'll start to rot after three, four days and water your plants with it. That gives them such a boost. So you could do that with tomatoes. You could do that with peppers. You could do that with zucchini if you're still growing. Zucchini, we're kind of at the end of the season for that. I planted a couple seeds. I've got them growing. They're kind of small. I don't think they're going to take off. So I think right now we're going to go into September. I want to think about the stuff that's going to grow through September, October, November, and into December. And that is going to be my, well, my ginger and turmeric is going to keep growing. So that will grow until it gets cold. Once it gets really cold, it will die back, and then I just dig into it and get that out. I'm going to grow a lot of greens. And I think a lot of you should be growing greens. First of all, it's the most important thing for your body. It really is. It's fabulous food. It's got everything you need pretty much in there. The other thing is, there really isn't a wrong time when to harvest. You can grow them. You know how people grow microgreens? You can pick them real little if you want. So as soon as they start growing, and you want to make something, and you're making a salad, or you're making a sandwich, you want to get some greens in there, something that you know has enzymes, you can pick that right away. You can just grab it, pick it, throw it on top of your sandwich. It doesn't matter if your plant's that big and you take the outer leaves from the plant, it's going to keep growing. That's why the greens are so good to grow. And it can be any of your greens, pretty much all the greens that you can grow. Lettuce, it lasts a long time here. I'm not going to get into lettuce because there's so many things on lettuce. It's that I grow them in a big container and they stay small. Like I said, it's a big thing to talk about, and then I transplant as I need them. But as they grow in a single container and they start getting big, you harvest the outside. And then once they start to bolt, you can either leave them, which now I'm leaving the bolting ones for the birds. And plus, you can collect your own seeds. I will never have to buy lettuce again as long as I let some of them bolt. And you can then start a new one. And you can just go back to where your source is, which is a container that's got a bunch of baby lettuce, or I should say stunted little lettuce, pick those and start them again. You could do that in simple potting soil. Soil from the ground. Anything that's good drainage. You want to make sure it doesn't, though lettuce likes water, you want to make sure that it has good drainage. 
So that's it. So I think the main thing today is I just wanted to say hello. It's been so hot. I'm going to be slow on putting up, I think, a lot of garden videos. So I'll have the garden tours as things are changing. Gary's been getting wood chips. They called again today. And I took the phone and gave it to him because I didn't know what to say. And he told him in a couple weeks, maybe, because he's still laying it out on the, the walkway. I just wanted to talk about things that people tell you to grow research it and see if it's something you want to eat because if you grow food that you like and you will become successful there will be some things you can't grow it just happens even with me so for some reason it doesn't grow but then you'll have some that you can't stop them they grow like a weed malabar spinach is one but it'll get to the point where you'll have so much and you're not going to use it you want to get you don't want to get overwhelmed with stuff you're not going to use because you'll stress out kind of like my fig leaf gourd that grows back there i don't know what to do with it you want to grow things that you're going to be excited to pick bring in the house and use and i think greens are really a big way to start you can go to the nursery and you can buy some starts already you could get seeds from different greens and get them growing that way experiment with a bunch of different types and see which grow better for you for some reason, red lettuce doesn't grow here for me. It starts to grow and something happens to it. But I can grow all the romaine lettuce I want. So you want to experiment on what will grow for you. And once you find that one niche that's going to grow really good for your microclimate that you're trying to grow it in, then start with something else too. Continue to grow that. Find something else. And I think that will make gardening more enjoyable throughout the year. On my windowsill right now, I am growing, let's see, what am I growing on my windowsill? I'm growing mushroom plant. I'm propagating on the windowsill and they're getting too big. So I keep taking the leaves off and eating it. It's a green plant. When you eat the leaves, it tastes like mushrooms. And I'm also growing walking onions right now. And I've got a tomato plant growing and some peppers, but I really don't want them there. I have grown peppers on my windowsill. They get, the plant gets pretty big and they tend to grow one or two peppers. It's kind of a waste. You want to be able to grow something you're going to get a big return right away. And that's why I say greens are really good. Well, we will start cooling down. So plants should do really good. And you look around your property, whether you're doing it outside or doing it on your windowsill or on a patio, and for the winter type garden, you want the sunniest location. And then I think you'll be able to grow a lot even in the winter. But that's what I've got growing on my windowsill is walking onions. I love walking onions. And unfortunately, you can't go to the nursery and buy them because they don't have seeds. They throw a little onion at the end. They kind of like, like guppies. You know, if they're just growing and all of a sudden they just burst into more onions. Let me get some water. <clears throat> Everything's blowing around here. These are the big straws I use for making my water fountains. And they do really good on the windowsill in a nice sunny window. And you don't want to put too many walking onions in one small container. I use cottage cheese containers. So you want to put just a couple in there because they do get root bound right away. They send a bunch of roots down there and you want to make sure they have enough roots. And then I'm picking the outsides. I used them last night for dinner and it's been really nice. So I just kind of wanted to come out and say, hey, if you don't see videos every single day, that's why, because it's been so hot. But I am going to get out there with my auger probably, well, maybe today. I'm not sure. It's kind of hot. It's really nice here. It's actually beautiful here. But I want to experiment with that. I'm using a small drill, one of my little uh, charging up drills, a little electric drill, but it's uh, got a battery pack to it. I could use a regular drill, actually, because I've got my power banks. And I, tr I kind of like tried it in a hard spot when it came and it kind of stopped but I saw that what I could do is just work it a little bit so I'm going to get that going I haven't done anything to plant yet that's what I'm going to do soon so I hope I didn't bore you too much I just thought I'd come out and say hey we're doing good um, we're trying to stay cool I hope you're all doing well if you're in a hot area please stay cool drink a lot of water don't forget salt's important so make sure you drink juice or something with electrolytes and that's basically it for now. And if you're in a cold area, try to stay warm. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow and grow something. Bye-bye. One more update. We now have got 11 guineas. Look, they're still hatching. Look at this. You can't even see them in there. We got them there. Oh my goodness, look at all the babies there. I think he just hatched 11 today. You see that? So that's exciting. And that's another thing that's going on.
Yep, that's it. Okay.